The mid-1930s were an interesting time for Hollywood. In July 1934, everything had changed. With the formation of the Production Code Administration PCA, a new branch of the Motion Picture Producers and Distributors of America MPPDA, every film had to receive a seal of approval to be distributed at American theaters. Films could only qualify for these seals if the PCA deemed them compliant with the Motion Picture Production Code. It must have been quite a shock to filmmakers to have to work with the PCA throughout production to ensure that their movies were code compliant, since they had ignored the code for four years. However, they had to take the PCA seriously, and movies released in the rest of 1934, 1935, and 1936 show a complex transition period as the film industry figured out how to make successful code films. Today's moment of movie wisdom is from, Rose Marie, 1936. This scene takes place 97 minutes into this 113-minute movie. A Mountie, Nelson Eddy, has been tracking down an escaped convict-turned-murderer, James Stewart, in the Canadian mountains. He meets up with the killer's sister, Jeanette MacDonald, and they use each other to find his hideout, although she doesn't realize that the Mountie has guessed her identity. Although they fall in love on the way, the lawman must do his duty, despite the woman's pleading. The film, Marie de Fleur MacDonald, is a famous Canadian opera singer whose younger brother, John Flower Stewart, is in prison for armed robbery. After a performance one night, a mysterious Indian, Boniface George Regas, comes to Marie's hotel room and tells her that her brother has escaped prison and killed a Mountie. He's hiding out in the mountains, but he needs money to get away. Marie decides to put on her plainest clothes and follow Boniface to her brother. Meanwhile, the mounted police send their best man, Sergeant Bruce Eddy, to capture Flower after one of his comrades was killed on the job. When they arrive in the last outpost town before heading into the wilderness, Boniface steals her money. Marie doesn't want to report the theft to the local Mounties, so she tries to earn some money at the saloon by singing. Sergeant Bruce is an opera fan, so he recognizes her voice immediately. He insists on befriending her and bringing her to the station to file a report. She fibs that she is going to a rendezvous with an Italian tenor, and he helps her find Boniface at an Indian festival. Bruce offers to act as her guide since he is also headed up to the mountains, not realizing they are looking for the same man. When the sergeant realizes that Marie de Fleur, whom he has dubbed Rose Marie, is the sister of John Flower, he pursues her into the wilderness. He catches up with her as Boniface runs away, so they travel together. As they spend time together, they begin falling in love, which makes Bruce's job all the harder. The scene, of all the actors in this film, James Stewart is the one whose name is the most recognizable today. This was the second of eight movies which singing stars Jeanette MacDonald and Nelson Eddy made together. The, singing sweethearts, were some of the biggest stars in the late 1930s and early 1940s, but few people have ever heard of them now. Meanwhile, Jimmy Stewart remains one of the most remembered actors from Hollywood's golden era, largely because of three movies he made with director Frank Capra, You Can't Take It With You, 1938 Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, 1939, and It's a Wonderful Life, 1946. John Flower is a very important character in that his dilemma with the law initiates all the action in the story. His escape from prison leads the two main characters, Rose Marie and Sergeant Bruce, to meet and eventually fall in love. Nevertheless, he only appears on screen for one short scene, which happens 95 minutes into the film. However, we see his picture several times earlier in the film on a wanted poster.